let me explain to you what fundamental changes art has gone through in terms of meaning and i'm going to do it by likening art to life the process of an art piece being made to a lifetime being lived let's say art is a young person who thought that they were unique no matter what they did art wasn't particularly egotistical but they were not aware of every artwork created all around the world and across time Mostly art experienced themselves for the first time. And that's why they thought that they were original. There were some works that they saw that were older than them, but those works are faded. They were not forever. They couldn't even be reproduced. So whenever art lived, whenever it was created, it felt worth it. Because art thought that uniqueness equals worth. Maybe it was worth it because it was the best that they could do. Maybe it was fun to make or to live. Or maybe it was a reflection that art shared with others to relate together. Then art developed ways to be reproduced, copied. But the process of uh, living their life or the process of making art still stayed their process. They still had to wake up in the morning, they had to wash their face, they had to eat, they had to clean their house. Art, just like life, required upkeep. Then something somewhat horrible happened to art at least art thought so <laughs> and it was <laughs> photography photography was created many art movements came to be because of photography suddenly taking paintings place regardless of how realistic your paintings are they're never going to be as realistic as a photograph and they're going to require a lot more time and effort that is not quite justified now when it is not a necessity this whole issue of course brought about the whole idea of art for art's sake. Visual art doesn't have to have meaning because it is visual art. Go look at the lines and colors and enjoy it. Then these ideas of what art should be now went through a ton of changes. And most of them are known as different types of movements in art, uh, specifically during modernism era. Visual art's cousin, performance art, started having a hard time too. Only with the creation of film. The artistic performance of a stage actor is definitely presented to the public by the actor in person. That of the screen actor, however, is presented by a camera with a twofold consequence. The camera that presents the performance of the film actor to the public need not respect the performance as an integral whole. Guided by the cameraman, the camera continuously changes its position with respect to the performance. The sequence of positional views which the editor composes from the material supplied to him constitutes the completed film. It comprises certain factors of movement which are in reality those of the camera not to mention special camera angles, close-ups, etc. Now both are presented not only with a crisis of identity, but a problem of permanence. You perform, but only once, and to a machine that will make your one singular performance take away the need for ever repeating it again. The film actor feels as if in exile. Exiled not only from the stage, but also from himself. With a vague sense of discomfort, he feels inexplicable emptiness. His body loses its corporality. It evaporates. It is deprived of reality, life, voice, and the noises caused by the moving about in order to be changed into a mute image, flickering an instant on the screen, then vanishing into silence. This situation might also be characterized as follows. For the first time, and this is the effect of the film, man has to operate with his whole living person yet foregoing its aura. For aura is tied to the presence. There can be no replica of it. It used to be that that which withers in the age of mechanical reproduction is the aura of the work of art. Now films can be reproduced, photographs can be reproduced. And the whole point of them is that they are a reproduction of a performance. They are not a live thing that's gonna start and end and never be seen again. Now art has grown. Art can be reproduced. Art now reinvented itself and made uniqueness of the ritual or the idea as the point of its existence. But archives made it possible for us to remember things far beyond our lifetimes. You can be born in the year 3000. 3000. Let's say 
that everything is technically the same. You would be able to access artworks from the 2000s. We can access works that were made in the 1900s because there are pictures of them now. They were preserved at first and then we took pictures of them. So none of this art disappears into thin air. Globalization made us aware of what is being made at this current moment everywhere at the same time. If you were an artist in the year of 1573, obviously you were probably privileged, that's why you even got to be an artist in general, obviously you were taught your skill, obviously <laughs> you were concerned more with creating something. For the church usually you were painting representational type of art most of the time and you were not aware of every single artist that was working even at the same time as you. You were aware of a few artists, maybe a few artists in neighboring countries if you were living in Europe where countries are not that big right you would hear about other artists maybe if you're lucky you would travel there and see their works but your experience of art and your experience of what is unique would have been very different than of an artist nowadays or even of a spectator nowadays now it's time for me to explain why have I been talking about AI art and the main character syndrome or energy at the same time? Main character energy or syndrome is a relatively new term that people started to use to describe seeing yourself as a protagonist of your life. It oftentimes includes romanticizing your life as well in order to see it worthy of being captured and made into a story, for example. Not because of just, you know, the invention of the internet and how much we use it or anything like that. I think that the reason why why so many people have to consciously think about seeing themselves as a part of a story or their story or as an integral part of their reality is because we are overexposed to so many people and so many people that are similar to us. We have been living for centuries believing that uniqueness and permanence have a very very tight relationship you know you couldn't have something unique permanently you also couldn't have been permanent yourself a lifespan of a human being used to be a lot more like a lifespan of an artwork an artwork would fade the colors would not stay in the same place paint would crack music would have to be played over and over again instead of played on a recorder or anything like that so we are at this point in history where we both know everything that happened before that was recorded not everything obviously but nothing has ever been as well recorded as things are nowadays and we're painfully aware of everybody who exists on this goddamn earth in terms of people who have some kind of likeness to us who are working in the same fields who are interested in the same things this type of thing is not just influencing artists or people who are in competitive fields and competing with each other it affects regular people too because I think that even 20 years ago, I feel like a lot more people had like little terms to describe themselves or terms that other people would describe them with. And I think that it is closely also tied to our obsession with aesthetics and dressing in aesthetics, naming aesthetics before we even live them nowadays. For example, that aesthetic of a downtown girl got popular. I saw videos of how to be a downtown girl before I saw any videos of somebody being a downtown girl. It wasn't like a thing thing that people knew about or it wasn't a thing that came about naturally. It was just something that was pulled together by somebody, called something, and redistributed to the masses, right? But the reason why it works so well and the reason why we need it sometimes, at least we naturally gravitate towards it, is because we lost a lot of the natural relations to our surroundings. I feel like a lot more people used to be the prettiest girl around, you know, like in town or in the neighborhood or at school. A lot more people were the smartest one anybody knew. A lot more people were known for these characteristics and put in a position of being the person who identifies with it or is identified with it by others. Does not mean that this is not a shallow thing, you know, it obviously can be. But I think that we definitely had more of this dynamic going on. Because think about all the stories that, for example, your grandparents told you about how someone got married and oh this guy was he was the best in the physics department and she was the best in chemistry department. Everyone was the something. You know what I mean? 
now I can't really say that about anybody because I feel like we all know we are painfully aware of everyone who's more something and it can be a negative or a positive thing so for example we usually had like an old person in the neighborhood who's like very grumpy and kids would be kind of spooked by them now you're so exposed to so much stuff on the internet or just in general in the news and whatever that none of those people around you really feel like they're that defined by it because in comparison to all the other things they kind of they completely pale in comparison really and i feel like that kind of became a thing for all of us in many 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 regards we are addicted to defining ourselves as much as possible with aesthetics and it's also the reason why a lot of people are obsessed with posting themselves online so much it's because we have made it impossible to feel like you are a part of your life like you're a part of your story. Anything that you can identify yourself as pales in comparison with something you see. Again, it doesn't mean that it's a positive characteristic or a negative characteristic, that it's a shallow one or a very deep reflection on you or anything of that sort. It could be literally anything, but it still pales in comparison. That's why I think that this whole main character energy thing became popular because people started to consciously focus on trying to center themselves in their own lives lives in terms of realizing that maybe this moment is the most beautiful sunset that I've ever seen because yeah you've seen some in movies that were better maybe you've seen pictures that were better but in reality this is the only one that you're actually going to experience and I think that I think that that's where it's kind of stemming from now that we're at the age of AI art conversation. I am not gonna reiterate every conversation that has been out there about that. That's why I'm taking a different approach. That's why I'm talking about something that interests me, the connection that I see here. AI art, it's a bunch of bullshit to be honest. Not because I'm afraid that, oh, artists are not gonna have jobs. Writers are not gonna have jobs. If I can't do art for a job, I'll just go become a barista or a plumber. As long as I can pay for life with that and I have time for myself and to do art, I'll be very happy. I don't really need to do this for a job as long as I get to do it in general. If art is gonna become just an AI generated thing, for example, movies that are written by AI and then created by it. I think that there is no point in making art anymore at all. Let's just end it, right? If you're gonna be one of those chats, you know, who are like, art could be made by AI, look at this. And they like show you like a very messed up video that <laughs> like genuinely does not look like anything narratively driven at all. And they tell you this is the future of movies or whatever i want to genuinely ask them what's the point of making more what's the point of making more if this is what you're supposed to do with it you're supposed to feed it a bunch of information a bunch of other movies that were created for example or a bunch of images of a person who's dead now to create an illusion of them existing and to create a new variation of the same thing What's the point? The more AI replaces art, the more we continue creating only remakes. The further away we're moving from experiencing our existence in a unique way, because we have kind of decided that art can live longer than people and therefore there's no more need for new art, right? You either subscribe to that idea that there's no reason to be making any more of it, we can just look at the old stuff, or you are of the idea that art used to be a lifelong thing, it would exist for about a hundred years of that, some performances only exist for half an hour, and then you would experience a different thing that has similarities with it or it's the same thing but you don't know that it's the same thing because it has been made by a person a hundred years later when the other thing has ceased to exist you can't be both this is what is logically so incoherent about people who are so into ai art what are you going for here what are you trying to achieve here do you want to next thing you should say because the thing is philosophically speaking if there's no point in making new art, making new expressions, or trying to relate to people through your personal experience and making art for yourself, yourself for the first time, then there's no point in anything really that involves upkeep. 
There's no point in living. There's no point in eating. There's no point in cleaning or doing anything. And you can say in the comments, like being like, oh, yeah, well, that's how I feel. And like, you're all like nihilistic or whatever. I mean, good for you. Go to therapy, though. Because the thing is, even if you are the most nihilistic person in existence, like, I don't care because nihilism is one of those things that makes any conversation or any debate void. You can just click off of that video and go do something else. I actually don't do anything because doing anything is pointless, right? So if you are participating in life, you do believe that existing and just like living your life is worth it for the sake of just doing it, for example, right? I'm more of an absurdist, not a nihilist. But regardless of that, it just genuinely makes no fucking sense where we have arrived. And I think that it only... <laughs> the only reason why it makes so little sense is also because people who talk about AI art and who are so enamored with it are usually people who don't particularly engage in their own existence in any meaningful way. They kind of just coast by and they, you know, think that just because they wake up at 5 a.m. and they journal, God knows about what, because they definitely do not think, by pursuing perfect productivity, that they somehow create uniqueness that they crave so much you know because the thing is most of those people are always obsessed with being the first being the inventor the explorer whatever the hell which is also really funny all the time because they're all the type of inventor that elon musk is which is like you're not an inventor you just don't mind being an asshole you know you're just doing things that everybody thought of but thought mm, maybe i shouldn't because i'm not a dickhead and then because you did those things that everybody else decided not to do, you think that you invented something. Archetypes, all lives have happened before. I'm sure there have been a version of me in like the year 600 that, yeah, she wasn't making YouTube videos or whatever, but she had maybe a very similar life in terms of socioeconomic status to compare to people around her. She might have been struggling with the same issues at one point or another. And even if there wasn't a copy of me in quotations, then there was a myriad of people who all had a portion of their lives that could intersect with my experience and be a complete copy of it. So even though I am a unique combination of those experiences, it does not mean that all of those experiences on their own were unique in themselves. If you're familiar with things that were before us, you would be able to describe us. It's strange that we have arrived to this point where we don't even want to be heroes in our own stories. We're so obsessed with trying to create something unique that would be universally, subjectively unique, that we do not realize that to us, to you, you're only gonna have a maximum of like 90 years on this planet if you're lucky. And you want to tell me that you want to spend the entire time feeling bad that it's not a unique experience? You haven't lived it. You haven't lived this life before. You have not experienced every single thing that ha happened before. So there is a point in learning to paint and learning to paint realistically and then moving on to abstract art or whatever the hell. You can go through 300 years of human history in terms of art in your lifetime just because you can do it faster due to information being available. But it does not mean that your pursuit of it is pointless. Technically, it might be, you know, everything is pointless, technically, I guess. We don't know, but maybe. However, creating new variations of art with machines is absolutely ridiculous. Unless you're the type of person who is lying down right now, not watching this video, not eating, not cleaning, not doing anything, and just waiting for death because you're so nihilistic. There's like, there's no other way, you know, it's either one or the other. Pick it, pick one. <laughs> Basically, my thesis is, if a person creates a piece of work themselves, regardless of it being similar to other works that came before it, because we are just used to, you know, making archetypes, um, and maybe even when we're not used to, there was something that was similar in ideas, whatever, whatever. When a person makes that, to them, it's a unique experience. Them creating it at the same time as you would be like restarting the evolution of art with each artist's lifespan. That's why I try to kind of compare art to a human 
and talk about art as if it's a human that was growing up. This is the reason why art is so difficult to explain in utilitarian terms because oftentimes people who want it to be useless in terms of uh, its impact on the world don't realize that art is kind of a connection to the importance of each individual life instead of seeing everything as just means to an end, means to the next thing. We are so not unique that at the same time when surrealist art was created in the 1930s, surrealist art was already explored in a different way, but to a certain extent through Bosch's work. What, like 400 years earlier than that or so? Anyway, if you want AI to be making movies and to be making shows and whatever, whatever. Just stop watching anything new, stop listening to anything new and just stick to the past. Because technically speaking, you haven't even listened to all of that. Go and do that. This is gonna go over their heads. If, if any of them watch this video, it's gonna go over their heads. They're not gonna understand anything. They're gonna be on their laptop like, but we could generate profit off of that and it is innovation you're just salty because your profession is not gonna be needed i'll just go build a house or something <laughs> there are other jobs in the world it's not the end of the world but i do think that what those people are saying is dumb anyway bye